Hey everybody, Adam from Team Swish here, and I uh, hope you all had a great Christmas. So here, we're we're hoping for a little bit of a white Christmas. And by white Christmas, I mean we care about snow permanence. And by we care about snow permanence, I mean we care about one snow permanent in particular. That one being Dark Depths. So this is Black Green Turbo Depths. So this is a uh, top performing challenge list from uh, MTGO user Sprouts. Um, I feel like this list is pretty close to what's stocked right now. Uh, and this is Black Green Depths. So what is Black Green Depths? Uh, also known as Turbo Depths, this is the deck that seeks to make a Merrill Age token as fast as possible. So you're playing things like Lotus Petal, Elvish Spirit Guide, Vampire Hex Mage, and Thespian Stage, and Dark Depths, and then using other various ways to try to stitch everything together. So once upon a time, crop rotation, sylvan scrying, all of these can find us lands should we need them. Then we have duress, inquisition, thought seas, and not of this world to kind of help protect us from removal spells and things of that nature a little bit. Pithy needle to shut off opposing wastelands. And then we have kind of some various we have herborgs we have a yavamaya just make sure we can cast all of our spells it also makes start depths tap for mana which is pretty important then in the sideboard we get some more kind of utility pieces we have endurance and leyline of the void and surgical extraction to hate on graveyards we have abrupt decays and force of vigors to hate on some permanence specifically and then a collector roof to also shut off some opposing artifacts we have caracas so be for decks like show and tell and things of that nature to kind of uh bully their legendary permanence or specifically their legendary creatures um and then finally we have some sylvan safekeepers these are things that we can board in to further insulate ourselves from removal or various things that would want to interact with our beloved 2020 so, uh, that's pretty much the deck. Uh, step one, assemble Merrill Lynch. Step two, question mark, question mark, question mark. Step three, profit. Um, so, that's what we're looking to do today. We're going to play some Black Green Depths. Hopefully this will be a quick one for us. Uh, hopefully a quick one in our favor. But, uh, let's get the show on the road. Hoping everyone had a great and stress-free holiday we can hope and uh i hope that you're ready for an excellent new year so i guess tonight's vi a video is an unofficial homage to a dear friend james bryant who is a player that i Used to play with on a regular basis. We won the die roll. Would you like to play first? Yes. Uh, this seems fine. This this seems fine. Keep. So James Bryant was a player who I used to play a lot with. Uh, we lived in the same area, and James and I used to do a lot of testing together also with uh teammate greg beamer um and we used to kind of collectively get together and test for events and work on kind of tuning our decks and things of that nature and james or jimmy was absolutely known for playing black green depths um so shout out to jimmy for this one Okay, preordain. Sure. Saga's not bad. I think I just want to cast a Sylvan Scrying, however. Go find myself one copy of Dark Depths. Oh, 
opponent appears to be Omnitel. Could also be Tide or something to that effect. But Prismatic Vista Preordain Preordain to me feels a great deal like Omnitel. I'm just going to slam the depths here. Pass. But playing this depths, it does telegraph a little bit that I have this rotate. But I think that that is actually okay. All these extra Urborgs are not excellent, but I think that we will be all right. Flooded Strand. Rotate. This one. We'll pay one for Fluster Storm. We'll pay one for Fluster Storm. I will find a Thespian Stage. Okay, well, Thought sees you. Preordain, Preordain, Flusterstorm, Brainstorm still feels like opponent is probably on, definitely on combo. Still could be tied. Opponent is on tied. I'm going to take the Merchant Scroll here. I think that's the one that's likely to actually matter. Tide, Tide, Island, Preordain. There's the Island. Let's fetch. Sure. Tide is good. Second tide is good. There's the preordain. Okay. What do you got, opponent? Opponent has to try to go off here. They have Force of Will in hand that doesn't particularly matter. Time Spiral. Oh, it's just Turnabout. Yeah, Turnabout's fine. Is this now Time Spiral? This is now a time spiral. I will indeed fetch here. Because I would prefer not to draw cards like Bayou. Time spiral resolves. Okay. 
Opponent untaps. I now no longer know their hand. There's a brainstorm. Sure. Yield till the end step, either I'm dead or I'm not. Endurances are... The endurances are on the sideboard, so either I'm dead or I'm not. So it's kind of going to be one of those ships passing in the night matchups where we're just going to kind of stare at each other and see what happens. Um... I think by this logic, I will board in Endurance, I will board in Surgical. And I think board in Endurance, board in Surgical. Probably cut not of this world. So, for anyone who's not familiar with High Tide, a big reason not to concede here is this is not deterministic by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I'm now going to turn off auto yields because this crop rotation could actually become relevant, strangely enough. I believe there is a Bojuka bog in my main deck. An opponent has now exiled two time spirals. Brainstorm, sure. Preordain. Do we have any other weird lands that interact? Step. Nope, just the bog. Another high tide, sure. Cunning wish. Okay. 17 times 3 is 30, 51. Okay, there's a bonus Cunning Wish. First one got Patch of Negation. Second one gets Brain Freeze. Brain Freeze us. I concede. You got it. So once again, take Surgical, take Endurance. Actually, just going to cut Needles here. These Needles don't really do anything. Not of this world still actually has some text. Uh, could Abrupt Decay if opponent is a lunatic and tries to board in to fairy's realm but i don't think boarding into fairy's realm versus us is actually something you want to do so i think i'm just going to hit submit like this i'm just looking for disruptive hands or hands that kill very quickly with protection this would be something like a double lotus petal Hex Mage Depths Not of This World kind of hand. Double Lotus Petal Hex Mage Depths Not of This World. I guess Endurance Green Card also helpful here. Or Bonus Not of This World. Up 
opponent now trying to figure out how they're supposed to board for turbo ducts. <clears throat> I don't think you actually, in this matchup, I don't think you have cards you necessarily want to board in. I think more than anything, what you're looking to do is uh, have your uh, snap or various bounce at permanent style effects available as wish targets. Uh, I like what's the other op? Like the deck plays dress down now. Dress down isn't particularly excellent. Yeah, like you just you. Steal your bounce effects and like opponent could feasibly have something like ensnaring bridge, but it's not very common. This is I think this is a keep. So this is going to be once upon a time. I want to keep this scrying for as long as possible. Cast once. Get depths. Play depths. Say go. Next turn will be Urborg Hexmage Pass. This endurance, so the logic behind boarding this endurance is this endurance will enter the battlefield and target me. That is the whole line here. If opponent has milled us out and done their thing. Cast Vampire Hex Mage. I mean, yeah. Okay. Good talk. <laughs> I mean, I, like... I'm not sure what world it was opponent thought we were living where I wasn't just gonna do that. Like, that's how this matchup works. I just presented 2020 as quickly as possible, so I'm not sure... Not sure what the line of logic was there, but uh, this is it's unfortunate that I'm looking at like getting rid of this bayou or this rotation, I guess is going to keep this. We're going to cast a couple of discard spells at our opponent, see what happens. I like that one better. Opponent is going to brainstorm here. So the beauty of this is opponent's going to hide their cards, but I'm also going to see what interaction I have to play around here. Like, for example, I get to know, like, if I draw a Hex Mage next turn, am I safe to just, like, slam this Dark Depths into play and then cast a Hex Mage and move on with my life? It'll all depend on what opponent's hand looks like. And what we draw, of course.
I think as it sits right now, unless we draw exactly Hex Mage and we know it's safe, the plan will be to play Bayou, Thoughtseize opponent again. I'd like to not play this crop rotation if I don't have to. This crop rotation being our pitch card for endurance is like a pretty real situation. And the reality of the situation is that, like, if we're not applying pressure to our opponent, this thought sees you plan, not incredible, because they're just going to refresh their hand anyway. I'll take the predict. Your hand is bad. Opponent's hand is very bad. Opponent shows basic island go. Cast hex mage. One card in your hand right now is high tide. Opponent's done with us. Awesome. So we're on the board. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, right? Was We were kind of in a great spot where the best card opponent could have drawn, could have hidden there and drawn, is exactly the card Force of Will. Uh, opponent didn't have enough time to Cunning Wish to set up for a bounce spell. So the best thing opponent could have hoped for was that they had put Force of Will on top of their library. And if opponent force of wills there, then they're still in a position where they have only lands in hand. They have pitched a high tide. And we're still going to just get to start moving things back along. Because the game plan, if opponent had... If opponent had force there, next turn I play Bayou, and I thought he's again... End step crop rotation, get stage, untap, play depth skull. So opponent wouldn't have needed runner runner counter spells. And to do it all through a thought seize. Yeah, seems seems unlikely. And that puts us on the board. Hooray, hooray. And it makes a lot of sense that we lost the one where you're playing in the dark. I kept a slower hand that was not disruptive in any real way. And by doing so, it put me in a position where I... I didn't really have a whole lot of agency other than play my cards do the thing. And in that matchup, I need to be racing disrupting or both both being the preferred so and we i was just kind of plodding along there playing a couple of land drops with the plan to crop rotate so not not spectacular so cloud turned it around in the next two games and we'll see what happens in round two all right, back for round two, and we won the die roll yet again. We will absolutely play first. Um, yeah, I'll keep this. Bayou Needle Name Wasteland. Oh, 
Oh! Humans? Gotta be humans. Unclaimed terror insect. Excuse? Oh, okay. Okay. This is the, the Magna deck. Alright. Inquisition of Kozilek. I accept taking Magda here. Are you in any way, shape, or form capable of... No, you're not. Changeling off of another unclaimed territory, which is a card we hadn't seen, so we know opponent's entire hand. I will rotate. Sack this one. Get Dark Depths. Uh, all of their stuff is on Insect, so all their cards are castable anyway. None of this particularly matters. I will play Vampire Hex Mage. So game plan will be End Step, Make, Untap, Sylvan Scrying... Get Sajiri Step. Step name's Blue. Chris, sure. Okay. Yeah. Make a 1-1, one, one. sure, don't care about that at all. Move all the counters, make a 20-20. Cast Sylvan Scrying. Get Sajiri Step. Play Sajiri Step. Name Blue. Go to combat. Attack you for 20? Good deal. All right. So what is this Magda bug stack going to be packing here? I suppose... Take a couple of abrupt decays. I don't think they're a wasteland deck. I'm pretty sure they're not a wasteland deck. So I'm gonna shave needles. And then. I. What else are they playing? I think that's most of what I have to worry about. Reasonable. I accept. Trying to remember this deck list randomly is quite a wild ride. Uh, sure, this is fine. Doesn't I'm missing a lot of what I want here? I think I'm in a mulligan this actually. I think we can do better. Ooh, 
Okay, well, well. I think I'm gonna keep ship a hex mage. So this is really close to doing a lot of things I want it to do. Swarm yard, okay. So I think this is Dark Depths, Lotus Petal, say go. So it's weird. I really just need like a land drop. I just need to draw a land of some kind. And then we're in business. Because any land, there's a Magda, sure, that's fine. That's about the best one I could have drawn. Sure thing. I have shown you my 2020. Moth S. Changeling. Yes. Play a Lotus Petal. Dress you. That didn't matter. Do the thing again. Sajiri so stat. Good talk. Cool. So, pretty quick 2-0 there. Um, and, so the Magda deck is trying to really bully a lot of the kind of fair blue soup. Um, you just play a bunch of creatures, kind of, you can peck in for little bits of damage. And then, when when you've kind of built up the engine of what you want to do, you can tutor up a big, giant, idiot artifact. Um, I believe the original version of the deck was Platinum Empyrean. But, like, against something like a, a quick combo deck like Turbo Depths, which wasn't really around when the deck came out, um, against something like that, I don't know that, uh, I don't know that there's a whole lot you can do. So, cool. 2 0, and, uh, we'll see you again in round 3. Alright, back for round 3, and one more time we win the die roll, so we'll play first. Um,. This one, not so great. You gotta mulligan that. Alright. Keep. Ship bog down. Turn one. Dress you? Oh, okay. That's not what I wanted at all. Yikes. Black. Inquisition you. Burning wish. Probably should have taken the entomb. Feels like opponent's setting up for... Wait, can they even cast the entomb? They can't cast the entomb. 
We're all fine. Oh, they can cast into him because of my Urborg. So this is what is known as the Epic Gamble, if I remember correctly. All right. End step in tomb. Deal. Echo, untap echo. Well, that's a kill. Opponent best hope they also have a kill. This is fine. You're dead or I am, friend. You're dead or I am. Burning Wish, Black Black, Galvanic Relay, okay. Look at all the cards. That is their eight cards. Okay. So they have another Echo. They have Wishclaw Talisman. Do they have a way to discard this Echo? No, but they can gamble and... Okay. I mean, I like my odds here. I will play Thespian Stage. I will cast Pithing Needle. I will name Wishclaw Talisman. And then I will Thought Seize you? Good. Sure. So opponent has to stitch together a winning line. Dark Ritual. That's their one card from hand. Okay. Lotus Petal. Yes. I wonder if opponent is just now realizing that I have shut off their talismans so they can no longer go find an LED. And Tim is fine. Echo, okay. So they just entomb another Echo. Okay. This is all fine. So what's funny here is I could make make rotate 
rotate into bog and bog them if they don't win. If they go for more like weird shenanigans, there's the LED, yes. These are in exile though. Gamble, okay. Gamble the way Badlands, I accept. Dark Ritual, sure. <coughs> they have access to a Burning Wish. It's kind of a big deal. There's that, yep. Okay. So that's going to shut off my rotate. Do I think that that matters? Probably not. It's probably fine. They get to grid. More mana. Oh, natural tendrils. Sick. Do I have any... No. I have just died. Set. Alright, begin sideboarding. Start with Leyline of the Void, Collector Roof, Force of Vigor. Cut these needles. Shave a knot of this world. Endurance seems okay, but I think I'm pretty comfortable where I'm at. Submit like this. Play first. Uh, this hand has all of the disruption, but nowhere to go. I think this is a thing that we keep, though. Go find Bayou. Thought sees you. All right. Really? Your hand doesn't really do much else. Kind of all dressed up, nowhere to go kind of situation. Ritual, sure. Opal, yes. Draws LED. Oh, gross. These. This one's good. We like this one. Yup. Oh, we're going again. You got it. This one's not great, not gonna lie. Two echoes gone. Petal, yep. What's the game plan from here? Brewery, yes. Petal, sure. It's 
this like ritual wish tendrils black talisman sure opponent wishing okay LED you got it gamble sure gamble for wit wish in the graveyard okay we're once again gonna echo is again kind of kind of meh and oof is now worse because they have the burgie yes this was a reason to board in decay Yeah. Hmm. Can't say this is a matchup I'm particularly well versed in, but given that my experience on depths is already limited and this is just no, nope, there can't be tendrils. Another wish claw talisman, sure. What are we doing now? So three echoes are gone. So I can't be doing this much anymore. But I can't imagine they need to be doing that much more. Gamble. Uh-huh. It just pays for itself. It's where you echo again. LED. Sure. You got it. Defense grid. Uh huh. Get tendrils, tendrils. Gotta be tendrils. Correct. Yikes. Yeah, that one feels pretty bad. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're just, like, a turn or so faster than us on average. So, kind of how that's probably going to play out. Could have mulliganed to Leyline. Don't know if mulliganing to Leyline is necessarily a winning strategy. Because opponent doesn't necessarily need their graveyard. It's just helpful. Yeah, rough. Alright, well, see you in round four. All right, round four, and we've again won the die roll. Apparently the RNG gods know that we're on depths tonight. Keep. Cast once upon a time. Get stage. Thoughts he's our opponent. Uh, none of those particularly matter.
Thalia is the most annoying? No, this card's still very good. Even when it's solitude, like this is gonna be gas. Basic planes. Mom, sure. Gonna pass here. Planes, spirit. I grab a bayou here. Cast my once upon a time. I guess I'll take this herb organ that I don't particularly want, but sure. Dark Depths. Dees. Funny enough, actually, what I get to do here. I'm gonna play this needle. I'm gonna name the Rashadden port I know they have. And I'm just gonna pass. One found another spirit, sure. Take three. I'm going to blow up their port here because it actually takes them. Black, black. No, I can't. Can't do that and save stage. So I'm going to blow up their port because it takes them further away from being able to cast Yorian. Which I think is relevant. Cast the Sylvan Scrying. Successfully bait my opponent into Wastelanding. Sick. Get Dark Depths. Play Dark Depths' land for turn. Cast Hex Mage. Say go. I'll just take the six here. Opponent now needs to have two pieces of interaction. I know one of the cards in their hand is Batter Skull. No. <laughs> Sick. Three for one, our opponent.
He has three for two, technically, but... Take... Cast this for green, sacrifice this one. Get a dark depths. Play stage. Have two layers. Stoneforge Mystic, sure. <clears throat> Fine, GTA. You got it. And now, I want Sylvan Safekeeper and I think that's it. Cut dresses. I guess I can shave a Thought Seas. <clears throat> Safekeeper's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for me. Sure. I like this well enough. And one of the cards I'm worried about, I can't thought Caesar or duress away. So. Uh, yeah. I need to find a green source. That's fine. Cast once upon a time. Okay. Show you dark depths. Cast needle. Name wasteland. Okay. That one's pretty good, not gonna lie to you. Uh, so... Yavamaya... Go and grab Urza Saga. That'll create a backup plan for me.
Plane cycles timeless dragon. That's totally fine. Recruiter of the Guard, you got it. Gonna go get the Skyclave Apparition? The one you want to answer this Pithy Needle? Goes and gets a Solitude, that's fine. Ooh. That one's quite good, I'm not gonna lie. So we're going to play stage here. Cast Needle. This one in the spread to Caracas. This one's gonna grab me another Dark Depths. That one shut off. Okay. That's fine. Cast crop rotation by exiling Elder Spirit Guide. Get rid of this. Go and grab another one. Take one. That's going to name Wasteland again. I've shown a point that I have two depths. It's turn I think you're supposed to put your Yori in hand. I'm going to be real with you. Okay. You're just getting another flyer, I understand. I'll take one. So we need a knot of this world. That's where we're at with this. It doesn't actually matter because both of these tap for everything I need them to. I'll Inquisition you. Opponent's going to put me to 38 here, and I still get to resolve an Inquisition of Kozilek, which I feel pretty good about. So what's our game? Oh, they have planes, planes. Sure, sure, sure. Put Yori into hand. 
Yeah, there we go. Okay, Dece. Stage. Slam another of these on Wasteland just to protect myself. Attacks for eight, sure. Let's cast Yorian, yes. Got it. Get a recruiter, get a wisp trigger. Wisp is also going to target Recruiter. So Recruiter is going to pick up Solitude here. Solitude, Solitude? All right. Drawing that was not exactly where we wanted to be, but like... Recruiter comes back. Gonna get them another thing. Solitude, Solitude, Flicker, Wisp, One Unknown. So they have double Solitude available to them. Okay. They're just going to take their attacks. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Sure. I mean, from what I can tell, you're going to give me 20 life. Flicker Wisp. Target Yorian. Sure. Wisp resolves. Yorian's gonna blink some stuff. Deal. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> That's so good. All right. Well, opponent did have the opportunity to interact there. Apparently they just didn't want to, I guess. So, uh, three and one and i'll see you in round five well we're back for round five and somehow this league we have won every die roll and we would absolutely like to play first Ooh, this one looks dece gonna keep it cast this once upon a time Uh, none of these is actually what we're looking for? Uh, I guess I'll take the Bayou. Thoughts ease you? That's the one we care about. So as I kind of expected, this is Balencia and Boga, and they are playing some sort of blue-white, probably standstill deck by the looks of it. That's fine.
I'm just gonna start jamming these hex mages onto the stack. Yeah, you got it. I mean, the deck's full of lands, friend. Like, I, I don't know what you expect. I'm gonna beat for two. We know five of the six cards in there and five of the seven. There's Flooded Strand. I'm gonna cast another Hex Mage. Go to combat. <clears throat> Opponent's gonna fetch here. They're gonna get Tundra. You have the plow? They do. That's fine. We know four cards in their hand. There's Basic Island. There's Ponder. That's Brainstorm. Okay. So the only card we l still know about is this Force of Negation, which they could feasibly just get rid of? That's Wasteland. Oh, they're okay. They're a blue white Delver deck. I understand. So, I'm going to rotate this. What do you got? Force of Will pitching Force of Negation, sure. I will just Thought Seize you. There's another Plow out. Keep this Urborg. Opponents flip into Prismatic Ending here, sure. They're kind of dismantling it here. That's unfortunate. It's an Urborg that I don't particularly want. I don't know that you're supposed to let me do that, opponent. Okay, so they are just guy. Draw a card. That one's decent, actually. If 
Ponder's fine. Opponent needs to think about closing this out pretty quick. Sky Whale. I accept. Can I go to six? All right. So I can. Copy that. And I'm just dead? Yikes. If I had just let that go. Wild. Alright. So, Endurance good here because blocks Delver of Secrets. I like Sylvan Safekeeper because it's going to shut off their swords to plowshares. What am I going to shave here? This is one of those wild ones where I guess maybe me, I'm just not supposed to board in Endurance at all. And not of this world is like kind of questionable because they're going to be able to bully that out of my hand pretty quickly. Actually, maybe I'm just supposed to shave Thought Seizes because they're going to put pressure on me. I can see that. Sure. That makes as much sense as anything else. I'm in. Wax emit. I'll play first. Alright, so this is a keep. Get a once upon a time here. Elvish Spirit Guide. Needle on Wasteland. So they have the Wasteland. I'm going to play my Depths here and just pass. Nope, that was wrong. That was very, very wrong. I don't have enough mana for that to work. I guess the opponent has to respect that I do. Kind of wild. It's fine. Safekeeper. All right. Okay. That's fine. We're just going to let that happen. Just 
Just gonna pass here. Opponent's the one that has to respect me right now. If this wasteland ever gets tapped for any reason, they just kind of lose the game. Forager? Felt like a whale. Cast a once upon a time here, get a hex mage. Play a hex mage. This is fine. They're going to grab probably ending. They just grabbed ponder. Ponder's fine. The one no counters in it, please. They have the plow, sure. Crying. Grab Dark Depths. Play Dark Depths. Play Hex Mage. Say so go. I will not declare blockers, promise. They have the ending here. But they need ending plus plow? Or a bolt. Okay. What do we got here? Is this like some from the ashes garbage? another whale sure gonna take him off one has another plow putting me to 54 play peatland and pass So, game plan here is just to kind of wait my opponent out. There's a Stoneforge Mystic. That one's actually kind of spooky. That's going to speed up the clock by a lot if it fetches a Cauldra. It's just going to fetch a Batter Skull. Okay. Cast Needle. Name Wasteland once more. Name Wasteland again.
So the reason not to name Stoneforge Mystic with this is because opponent is already at a point where they're very, very close to just casting the Batter Skull. And I'm fully confident that but with the uh, Ponders and such that my opponent has under these Ethereal Foragers, they could absolutely stitch together the lands they need to just cast the Batter Skull. Opponent is also confident, that's why you would cast this Expressive Iteration. Days, sure. Oh, they just had an ending for it. Okay. You got it. Wild did opponent just decided randomly to... Gonna take seven, go to forty one. I'm just gonna grab a saga here. Oh. Don't always yield to that. That's a mistake. There's a lot of stuff you wanna do about that. That's a ponder. So this creates a backup plan so that we can just start making constructs. So we can just make a couple of constructs, fetch up another needle. Needle can once again name Wasteland. Like opponent has recurring Wastelands for basically forever at this point. But speaking of. Opponent snaps that off immediately. Wasteland, Wasteland. It's only two of them? Feels like more. Now opponent's really, tr really trying to put pressure on. It's strange to me that opponent has actively decided to just, like, not develop towards putting this Batter Skull in play. And cast this hex mage. Like, it's just happening. I'm sandbagging the spirit guide because I think that it's gonna be good for later. I think that the spirit guide is gonna come in handy when opponent thinks they get me with the days that they've shown me. That's rude, opponent. Why would you do that? Also, why is lightning bolt still in your deck? Lightning Bolt still being in your deck feels strictly incorrect. There's the ending. I'm gonna fire this off. See if opponent just instinctively dumps in their batter skull. They are. Oh, nope, Force Negation. Sure. That's fine. I, again, I could think about casting the Spirit Guide at any time. I'm not under enough pressure that I'm that worried about it. That Norse that's fine. That is not a card I particularly care about. There's a Force of Will. That one seems relevant for later. I'm gonna take 9 here and go to 16. I didn't need to like, actively start stitching something together quickly here because this clock has gotten quite fast. There's Peatland. There's no point in me cracking this Peatland now because it doesn't actively do anything. There's 3 Hex Mages gone. Saga's already gone. I have one, two depths gone. So I'm fishing for both stage and. Opponent finally dumps in their batter skull. This is three, six, nine, thirteen, fourteen. I take, I'm going to two? Brainstorm is fishing for bolt here. Like, pretty easy.
Well, the top four. Show me days. That wasteland pretty well, like, locks it up. I don't understand. What? What? Oh. Neat. All right. Well. So opponent's germ just disappeared because of Forager, and I was like, that's... Was supposed to do that in their end step. Totally forgot. Well, 3-2 it is. Um, a Delver Blade match, it feels hard. Like, that feels like extra hard mode because they're a plow deck and a deck that has quick pressure and a deck that has wasteland. But um, beyond that, like, I'm kind of shocked how good Depths feels right now. As much as everyone's focusing on a bunch of lands matter cards like wasteland and life from the loam and things of that nature like i'm kind of surprised that this felt that good um epic gamble matchup felt like it's probably more winnable than i made it seem um i just feel like i don't really know where i'm supposed to pick fights with that one and how i'm supposed to mulligan uh, i also think there was a point where I thought seized a Burning Wish instinctually for my opponent when I was definitely supposed to thought seize an Entomb. Um, yeah, just one of those things that I, I'm not super familiar and therefore womp womp. But, alright everybody, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this nice quick 3-2, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed your holiday, and I hope you all have a great new year. Thanks everyone, cheers, and uh, we'll see you again soon.